Hello everyone, this is Joseph from Vine and Table with our continuing educational program we call How to Cocktail. Um, today we've got a special guest, an old friend of mine from both Eddie Merlot's and uh, Bruce Chris, Jordan Ward. I'm from my own Lizzo. You can go ahead and Lizzo while we do this. <laughs> uh, so uh, Jordan is, what is your official title? Today, buddy? Bar manager. Bar manager at Prime uh, 47 in Carmel. Uh, and he, with the, the advent of kind of warmer weather, and smaller group gatherings and things getting a little bit back to normal. Yeah. Um, he is going to show us how to do a batch uh, recipe for an old fashioned. Old fashioned. All right, so what I'm going to do, this is a recipe for an old fashioned that I actually have on tap at Prime 47. Uh, it's selling very well. Um, key to a batch cocktail is the longer they sit, it's kind of like chili. Day two is better than day one, day three is better than day two. So, uh, what I'm going to show you is how to batch up a pitcher of old fashions because we all know it takes some time to make and I'm impatient, so here's how it's done. We're going to start with the uh, Bardstown Fusion Series. Bardstown Bourbon Company does a bunch of great stuff. Uh, it's all mixed in different mash bills or grain recipes. The Fusion Series is a mix of two uh, mash bills of rye and one mash bill of wheat. So you get spicy and sweet with this one. So, I'm just going to be brutal and we're going to go the whole bottle. I appreciate the fact that you touch the jigger while you pour it though. <laughs> yeah, well. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is this recipe that I'm using is broken down to a two ounce spirit pour, three dashes of bitters, and a half ounce of simple syrup. So instead of turning this over and shaking it a whole bunch of times, Get bitters and just cap on them. It comes off and pour. So we're going to do a total of a three quarter ounce pour of bitter cube cherry bark vanilla bitters, which we do have here on the shelf. Fantastic product, by the way. And Angostura cocoa bitters, which we don't because I didn't know it existed, but we certainly will have it on the shelf. Brand new product. Quarter ounce. Oh, I got it. It's going to go right in. And we're going to do six ounces of simple syrup. As big into this one. Three. Now, Here's where the curveball is. Generally, at this point, I would dump a bunch of ice in it and stir it and sweeten the syrup. But if it's going to sit in your refrigerator, you don't want ice in it. So that's where you dilute the cocktail. The whole point of stirring or shaking a cocktail is to dilute it so all the ingredients are more easily mixed. So what I did is I brought in, I didn't tell Joseph this, this is uh, mesquite smoked water. Which so, we did not have at the store. So if you have a smoker, take a metal pan while you're smoking whatever you're smoking in it just leave a pan of water in there. You can actually make simple syrup with it on a one-to-one -one ratio with lemon. So, we're going to do... And is that just water or is that simple syrup? This is just water. Okay. I used to use a smoked simple syrup, but if you use simple syrup to smoke water, you can control the sweetness and smoke this individually. So what's that, eight ounces? Ten. Ten. So this would substitute the uh, the dilution of the ice as you were mixing. Correct. You ideally want to have about twenty to twenty-five percent of your your finished cocktail in your water. Okay. That's, I learned that. It blew my mind that it was that much. If you, if you want it mixed correctly and not too strong or too watery, you want to go about twenty percent. So you give us a light stir. Now, Jay, I don't know if I told you that, that uh, one of the really important part of the co uh, educational series here is we need to taste this. Okay. So there's some glasses right behind you, really? My glasses. Oh, okay. You're good <laughs> now, um, you can let it sit like that, and like I said, it's going to be like chili. It's going to all the, uh, the, the yeah. sugar. It's going to act as a binder. It's going to pull all the ingredients together. Or I brought some oranges for cosmetics. Put some oranges in there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So now, traditionally, Jordan, didn't they used to muddle oranges and that nasty cherry and the sugar old, together? The old fashioned is a drink with a really, really long and varied history. Um, if you've had Sazerac, Sazerac is old fashioned. Really? So there are stirred old fashions, there are muddled old fashions. Muddled old fashions have been around since I think 1860, maybe. Really gained popularity at the Dennis Club in Louisville. But there have been variations on it as far back as like 1820. The real confusion is people would say, make me a cocktail in the old fashioned way, but after the Condenas Club, it was called the old fashioned. Ah. So it's basically just a mix of spirit, bitters, and sugar. And really, you can use any spirit. The rum old fashions are great, mezcal old fashions are terrific. But we're doing bourbon today. So. And uh, what are your hours up there? What time's your bar open? Bar opens at four thirty. I'm there Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, along with my kegerator for the Bardstown Fusion Series. Um, we do uh, your traditional steakhouse fare, but it's it's better. Uh, currently, we are doing a uh, actual Kobe New York strip. Uh, we've got a Kobe tomahawk. We've got uh, terrific uh, twenty sides. Even chicken. You know, most people think steakhouse chicken is right. Kind of a, the redheaded stepchild where chicken's fat. All right. Well, there you proof, have it. the proof, as they say, is in the pudding, sir. So with the bird. Get that smoke right on the end. Yeah. That, fun? that is really nice, and it's perfectly balanced, even without you shaking it. Yeah. That's a really great cocktail. So uh, if you enjoyed this video or this series, make sure that you like and share the videos on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, please go out and help support our local restaurants. Uh, as you know, I'm a lifetime restaurateur and I really passionately believe that we should all support our local restaurants of which Prime 47, 47 is one. Fierce Independent. Cheers.